we're going to head northwest on Massachusetts Avenue now. The Chilean Embassy is just a, a long block and a half down the Chancery, and then the Ambassador's residence is right off Sheridan Circle, maybe a few, just a few houses down, which is where Orlando Latelier used to uh, hang out when he was ambassador during the early years of the Allende presidency. I had a film that we had shot in Chile called Que Hacer, or What is to be Done. All of the minister councillors were told to go see the film because it was shot in Chile and it took place during the election campaign of Salvador Allende. And uh, Letelier invited me to lunch to discuss the film and I heard from each one of the minister councillors a blistering critique because I had not done justice to their political party, the socialists, uh, the communists, the uh, radicals and so on. Letelier said that he personally liked the film. That was interesting, and that began our relationship. wanted to work, of course, to bring democracy back to Chile and on human rights in general. And both Mark Raskin and Dick Barnett, who were the co-directors of IPS, thought it was a good idea. And we hired him. He didn't stay all that long because Pinochet blamed him for several of the bad things that were happening to Chile as a result of Pinochet's human rights violations. The Kennedy Amendment, which cut off all arms sales and shipments to Chile and then the Harkin Amendment, which cut off all the rest except for humanitarian aid. And although Orlando was not responsible for either one of these, Pinochet in his narrow-shaped brain, of course, blamed him. And he ordered the head of the secret police, Manuel Contreras, who was a colonel, to do the job. Contreras, in turn, picked Michael Townley to organize the mission. Here we are. Nobody who was ever involved with these two people will or could ever forget this horrible day. It was, I remember, a warm, slightly drizzly morning. Orlando's car came to rest just here at the embassy doorstep. Townley had put the bomb at a place in the I-beam where the bomb would blow straight up. Ronnie was sitting in the seat next to him and just took a piece of metal in the throat and that wiped her out. I've just felt an overwhelming sense of sorrow and sadness, but I also felt that we have got to get the people who did this. And there was no question in my mind that the only possible suspect was named Augusto Pinochet. But Pinochet never got his name on that indictment with the signature of the U.S. attorney. And that was a tragic blow to American justice. I remember
remember the first year that I was at IPS and people were making plans to go to the Sheridan Circle program and I was thinking, well, why should I go to that? I didn't know Orlando and Ronnie personally. Eventually I got it that this is really as much about the broader pursuit of justice for human rights as it is about honoring these two particular individuals. And then later when Saul was planning to move from Washington to California, he wanted someone to kind of pick up the torch and take on some of the work related to Pinochet and I was happy to do that and got much more involved at that point. I think it's hard to be a woman at IPS and not think of yourself in relation to Ronnie Karp and Moffitt. You know, when I first started at IPS I was just slightly older than Ronnie was at the time she was killed. My work is quite different from hers. You know, she did the very important work in our development office, and she was also into the arts and music. She ran a music carryout that made musical instruments available to people of all income levels. You can't help but think, that could have been me. She was a woman who was liked by everybody at the Institute for Policy Studies. She had no enemy. She was sweet as could be and was a very good worker and very dedicated to her job. In the campaign to bring Pinochet to justice, IPS was like the glue that connected the lawyers and the family members of Orlando and Ronnie to historians and human rights activists and people who are experts on declassification. And we used media and lobbying strategies and we did demonstrations to push for Pinochet to be extradited to stand trial in Spain and also for the U.S. to indict him for the Letelier Mafia case. And in the end, yes, Pinochet died without having to face trial, but so much had been accomplished, and he died with many criminal cases against him on everything from human rights violations to tax evasion. He died in disgrace. Pinoche, although he was accused of a lot of crimes, died without having to face justice. Hopefully in the afterlife he got it. many years, IPS has taken Sheridan Circle, this place with a big war hero at the center of it, and turned it from a place to glorify militarism into a place to honor Orlando and Ronnie and to honor the pursuit of peace, justice, and dignity. We also every year hold the Human Rights Award event their names to both honor Letelier and Moffitt, but also to hold up new heroes and to encourage new human rights heroes in the U.S. and the Americas. Ronnie's life was cut short at 25, but she'd already made a big contribution to the world, and these young people are too. History is not only behind us, it's also ahead of us. We live in history. We are making history every single day, and we try to figure out where it's going.